Hey, this is Reg Atwal, and thank you, thank you, thank you. This is our hundredth video, celebrating 100 videos that we put on various platforms, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, other social media platforms, our private platforms. And I just want to thank you. I want to, I've got so many people to thank. And in this video, it's not just a chance to say thank you, but also just a refresh to go through some of the great people that have been interviewed on our channel, on our various shows. For those of you new to our channel, just to give you an idea of some of the different show themes that we created towards the end of last year, 2019, we've got Family Business Experts, which is sort of number one for us right now as a, as a show, which is our 28 episodes in its own right. We've got Family Business Legacies, which has also done quite well with six different episodes. We've got book videos for families and businesses, which has become very popular with 18 different episodes, family business Q&A with 15 episodes. And I'll just mention the names of the others to keep it simple. We've got Next Gen Entrepreneurs, Millionaire Mistakes, Family Business Talks, Family Business Academy, Family Business Films, which is a, a new one, having a bit of fun with only one episode right now. We've got Family Business Messenger, which was the first ever video as an introduction to the entire channel. But we also have a playlist for the Family Business Messenger where we also have lots of other videos that we rate people who we admire around the world have created good content. And there's around 26 videos in that playlist on YouTube. Uh, Family Business uh, Empires, where we've got 10 other videos there that we've listed. So in total, Really, really proud. I was doing some research on some of the guests that we've interviewed because for those of you who don't know, some of the videos are, are I'm driving personally with content around family business talks, family business Q&A with questions coming to us from our clients, from our community, book videos based on great books that I've read and reread over the last 20, 30 years. And I create short videos around those, leave people with key messages and hopefully they get a chance to maybe buy that book themselves and read the entire thing. But overall, let me just share some facts with you. With all the guests that we've had on the shows, we worked out that total net worth of the families and the entrepreneurs that we've interviewed is over $5 billion. That's a serious amount of wealth. To add to that, the guests have come from every continent in the world, the entrepreneurs alone have built over 300 companies between them. That's a lot of experience with startups and fast growth companies. And the experts and authors and speakers that I've interviewed have published over 100 books, most of them best-selling books, a lot of them on the New York Times best-selling list. They've sold more than 10 million copies and they've impacted between them collectively over 50 million people. I'm talking live audiences online and their video content and on mainstream television with some of them with their TV shows. That's the amount of people that they've impacted. So I wanna really uh, tribute a lot of these people with this video, the 100th uh, anniversary video. And right from the beginning, it all started uh, sort of end of last year with my son, Karen Atwal, who's the second eldest of four of our children. And that was one of the first videos. And I just want to leave you with some tips here. For those of you are experts, your business owners, and you're thinking of starting your own podcast, your own channel, your own show online, just get started. It, when we started, it was difficult. It wasn't easy. We weren't used to doing these things, talking to a camera, you know, having lighting, making sure the microphone, everything is working properly. And then you've got to start thinking about editing, if that's relevant. You've got to think about uploading it correctly. There's a whole, there's a lot of learning here. And we started off with literally one video a month. You know, literally one video a month. We're now at one video per day of throughout our different show themes that we have. And I've got to thank my son, Karen Atwell, because the first show we did was Next Gen Entrepreneurs. And we talked about how he set up his business in his early 20s as a startup. And the theme around that was, what do you need to do to hit your first $1 million in revenue as a startup? So for those of you who haven't watched it, I'm just going to go through various episodes uh, that I've got here. That was uh, episode, formerly episode two, outside the intro video. We then got to episode eight, 
I want to thank uh, Mr. Surinder Kandari, who's the chairman of Al Dabowi Group in UAE in Dubai. It's a $500 million uh, group, 100-year legacy, fourth-generation family business, which could be going into the fifth generation uh, not long to go with some of those youngsters who are growing up fast. And again, a great story about his personal journey, challenges, growing the business, new growth areas, working with leadership teams, his family values. Uh, then we've got episode 13, Raja, Abu Jabain family, second generation member, terrific guy, uh, talks about not only working hard, but also playing hard and getting that balance right. He's a professional polo player uh, and has built many entrepreneurial businesses in the FMCG, food, beverage type related industries, as well as being heavily involved with the family legacy business to do with engineering projects around the world. We had Lois Foker from Germany, and that was episode 14, who's a psychologist, a, a trained therapist, a counselor, a coach, and we got into a deep dive around family therapy issues when you need to use a counsellor, what type of issues family members have, marriages, divorces, a whole bunch of stuff. So that was Lois episode 14. And I'm mentioning these episodes because all of them got the hashtag and the number. So you can go to the YouTube channel and you can just literally do a search, put the hashtag and the number in, put Regitoire TV and it will come up. For those who want to get directly to the channel, just go to www regatwell.tv and that will divert you straight to the YouTube channel and you can literally go through the popular videos, the different themes and you can also go to the bottom of the page and go straight to the different show lists that we've created. So we've got David Bell from the UK, episode 15, talks about family dinners, business dinners, why we need to be connected and obviously after all of that COVID came up but he's been doing a lot of that online now, but I'm sure he can't wait to have those live dinners that he's been hosting for many years around the world. He's an expert when it comes to uh, getting people connected, and he's the owner of the private client dining club based out of London. So that was a great episode. Episode 17, uh, Evan Luthra, interesting gentleman, young, dynamic, teen multimillionaire, has built over 100 startups from around the age of 13, 14, up to the age of now 26 years of age. Yeah, he does claim that a lot of them don't make it because when you're investing or building startups, one or two out of 10 may make it. But there is a couple of potential unicorns in his portfolio and you have to watch that video. Some people love him, some people hate him, but at the end of the day, credit has to be due where it's due, where someone's worked hard and trying to do their best to build great startups. So hats off to you, Evan, regardless of the people out there who've given all sorts of comments uh, on the video uh, on YouTube. We've got number 18, okay, hashtag 18. We've got Kunal Lahori. He's a second generation member of a fantastic family business legacy based out of the UAE. Uh, again, an, another $500 million plus plus group. Uh, he's not only been a board member working with his father, his mother, his sister. Outside of that, he's also learned valuable lessons of being an entrepreneur where he succeeded and failed, had to pick himself up and then went again to build some great businesses, uh, exiting one or two and then continue there to build with his family a fantastic logistics uh, fund, uh, which, which is something you need to check out called the Man Ray Fund. So that was episode 18. Then we got to episode 19, a fantastic individual, I've got a lot of respect for him, is Raju Sharaf uh, from Regal Group. He's the group managing director, third generation family member, business that's heading to fourth generation already, $500 million plus plus group as well. And we talked a lot about succession, what it was like growing up, getting into the family business, uh, being involved in the business, but also building side sideline businesses. And we talked a lot about the next generation. And he's really uh, talked about how at later on in his career, going away from the textile, uh, fashion, retail type areas, then getting into property development, building some iconic buildings in Dubai. Uh, one of them is, is a real flagship for them, right in the heart of downtown, opposite the Burj Khalifa, uh, the 118 project, which again, you can check out the video, watch that and go to the description here to find out more about that, including co-partner in the Taj Hotel, 
New Taj Hotel in Jumeirah Lake Towers in Dubai. Then we've got episode 31. We've got Uday Shah, a okay, young entrepreneur, also one of our partners in Kenya. And he talked about his family business and what he went through, but also how do you gain clarity? What are some of the steps that you should be involved when you're coaching other people and, and, and making sure that your human needs are aligned with other family members? So great video, did extremely well, really quickly. And there's a big fan base out there for Uday Shah. Episode 36 was a duo. We had Steve Simpson from Australia with Steph Duplessis from South Africa, and they are the culture gurus. They talked about UGRs, unwritten ground rules. We also talked about the vaccine for cultural transformation, and that's definitely worth watching, which is episode 36, if you're looking to transform your culture. Episode 38, we had our guest, dear friend of mine, known for many, many years, a couple of decades now, is Nigel Risner who was voted number one motivational speaker in the UK and numerous awards from some of the largest CEO organizations out there, including Vistage International, Vistage UK. Uh, he's also uh, talked about how do you make an impact, how, and he's got a real fun element to his uh, uh, in the, in the interview that we did around being a zookeeper, and it's all based, based around his zookeeper series of books, best-selling books that you must uh, check out around profiling and using animals as a great way of understanding who you are. So then we had Solomon Rafahi, his uh, episode 40, hashtag 40, was all around the digital workplace. In fact, this was a video that did extremely well within 24 hours. It was timely because of what was going on with the COVID-19 situation, uh, where people were probably a few weeks into lockdown in certain countries. And he just talked about how the world is going to change and what you can do immediately as a business when it comes to the digital workplace. So well done, uh, Solomon, and thank you for that interview. Then came my Emirati brother, as I call him, uh, Ali Al Saloon from Abu Dhabi. Again, I've, I've known who I've known for many, many years. Uh, he is he's, he's a dear, dear friend. He's a brother very close to my family, and he talked about cultural co codes, he talked about how his father influenced him from a very young age. We used to travel with him around different countries, and since then Ali has gone on to become a UA ambassador when it comes to culture. He's been to 191 countries with his own TV show on mainstream TV, he was initially on Abu Dhabi TV, now on Dubai TV. It's aired across uh, the world for the Middle East and Arab cultural uh, uh, world population. He's had over 20 million uh, views of his episodes and he's also a best-selling author, has sold 1.5 million books. Uh, incredible gentleman, great entrepreneur and again you must check out that video when you want to learn about cultural codes, values, principles and what it's like traveling the world following your passion and he also talks about how he's grooming his next generation. We then had episode 44, Gautam Ganglani who's from UAE and India, about his new book. It was the first ever exclusive interview before the release of his new book called Breaking Bread. And he's a second generation entrepreneur and talked about how he worked with his father from a very, very young age, talking about this new book where it's all about relationships and connections and that philosophy of eating together and breaking bread. Uh, he is also the managing director of Right Selection, the Speakers Bureau global training firm based out of UA in India and worked with some of the, the, the most successful speakers in the world for training programs. So go and check out that one. That was episode 44. Episode 46, wow, you know, it just, the list just gets better and better. I'm not even halfway through yet. And by the way, those of you still listening to me, thank you, because I wanted to create this video before I carry on, not just uh, you know, as a tribute to these people, it, you know, it's a video, it's a digital asset. I want it to be on the internet where we could go back and look at this day and go, wow, we got to 100 episodes. But these were some of the phenomenal people that were interviewed. And I hope you carry on watching the rest and also go and check out some of these videos. Again, don't forget to go to the main YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, you going to help us reach more people, hit the like button and definitely share the video. We'd like to support more and more entrepreneurs and particularly family businesses around the world to make sure that their legacies continue. That is our purpose in life. So moving on to Craig Goldblatt, making a social impact. He talks about unbelievable story, you know, a heartwarming story about his grandfather, Oscar, 
and how this phenomenal business was built out of South Africa, became a global company, and then the family had exited from that business. And then it talks about you know what happens next. And, and as a result of having wealth in their life, he talks about from a young age, it was all about purpose. It was all about making social impact. And now that's exactly what he does around the world and works with ultra high net worth individuals as well, helping them make sure that they continue making a social impact where it's not just about the wealth. So great guy. You've got to look at that story. Then we get to Afin Khan. Oh my God. Afin Khan is basically what I call a personal development, peak performance rock star, okay? Um, you know, you've heard of Tony Robbins. This guy was mentored by Tony Robbins at a very young age. And since then, over the last 20 years, has grown a phenomenal brand across Asia and across Africa now. He's on the Next Gen Entrepreneur Show that we had. He's also helped 400 people publish their books, which is phenomenal. And again, you've got to check him out. Go and watch some of his videos watch him on YouTube, great energy. We had a lot of fun in the interview and it was so easy talking to him, loads and loads of tips around reaching peak performance. Then we got to episode 48, Tarek Karashi from the UAE, who's a futurist. He's also the CEO of Mad Group, uh, which is about making a difference. And he talks a lot about his new business and new areas that are expanding rapidly around EQX, and building an EQ exponential company. Very interesting. Talks about some of the principles and gives his opinions on what's going to happen in the future when it comes to growing businesses and how the world has changed. We then get to another futurist, Dr. Graham Codrington, episode 49 from South Africa, who talks about the future of work, but goes into a lot of depth to do with post-pandemic strategies to drive growth. He talks about what people need to learn, what skills they need to have in order to have jobs in the future and add value to their businesses, including the owners of companies. So it's a really, really good video worth watching. Episode 51, someone I've known from a very young age when I was like 17, 18 years of age getting into entrepreneurship. Same as episode 47, Arfin Khan. These are people I've known from a very young age. And Peter Sage is one of them. He talks about the inside track of best-selling book and talks about his journey of being a serial entrepreneur and failing multiple times, you know, times hitting rock bottom, he even ended up behind bars uh, for a while. And he'll tell you that story and you've got to read his book um, and, and how, how he basically bounced back. And he's a phenomenal individual. Uh, he's never been uh, done for any of, of the uh, alleged crimes that, that, that were, were coming up from these big corporates spent uh, a few months in prison, but there's nothing on his name. He's absolutely a wonderful guy and wrong place, wrong time, dealt with the wrong people and had the wrong contract signed. That's all I can say. And he'll teach you about the lessons of doing business with big corporates. And when you're dreaming big, as he was with a multi-billion dollar space project that he was trying to launch, how it could also go horribly wrong. So that was episode 51. We got episode 54, David Taylor. Uh, we talked about the naked family, the naked principles, and really all about his books. He's five best-selling books. He's got another one that's coming out. Uh, he's, he's spoken to millions of people around the world, and, and the bestseller is The Naked Leader. If you haven't read that book, it's definitely worth reading. And that was great to, to have banter with David Taylor about the whole naked family uh, ideas that we were bouncing with each other. Episode 56, Mike Wittenstein, who's the MD of Story Miners, and his business is all around story designing for businesses. Uh, he's had an impact at over $2 billion of revenue uh, and large companies around the world. So if you really want to master what it's like to story tell, story mine, design a story, this is your guy, okay? Go and watch the, the video with episode 56 with Mike. Uh -huh. Episode 58, wow, one of my favorites, actually. No disrespect to all of the others, but Stefan Betten was a boom billionaire back in the day. He then hit rock bottom, hit black swan, as we call it, when the black swan recession came along around 2008, 2009, and then how he bounced back. He talks all about fulfillment in life, doing meaningful work. He's building a company called Argonox right now, which is exploding around the world out of Germany. And it's a must watch. Talks about relationships, 
talks about wealth, talks about losing it, making it, what's the world all about, what's life all about, and just he talks about happiness and fulfillment. It's a really great interview. Episode 59, Jeff Ram, uh, great speaker, best-selling author, and he talks about the welcome back celebrity service strategy. Really lots of ideas in a short, short uh, interview with him, all about what you can do to welcome people back uh, post this pandemic situation and while it's going on right now, and really looking after your customers and delighting them, making them feel special so you can grow your business. So watch that. It's Jeff Ram, episode 59. Episode 60, I think this is the only one I've had a chance to interview someone twice. So that's it. Steph, you've topped it. Steph Duplessis was back again. But this time, instead of talking about the cultural side, we went back into his past of how his journey started. And we talked all about African wisdom, which is one of his books. And then we linked it and had a huge discussion around leadership. So I encourage you to watch that video. It's like a keynote uh, right there in that video, and it's very, very inspiring. Rapalang Rabana was episode 62, one of the first females I believe that I interviewed. She was in the Forbes 30 under 30 list. She's a tech entrepreneur, built a business for out at college, university, had, did an exit, built another business. She's now onto a third or fourth tech company. She's a great speaker, and if you want to be inspired, if you have a, a sister, if you want to inspire your mother, if you want to inspire someone else in your family, any any females in your family business, this is a must watch for them, okay? It's very, very inspiring. Uh, episode 63, wow. Uh, Sushil Shamlal Wadwa from India. He is really the global luxury entrepreneur. This guy has stayed in 1,200 hotels in their luxury suites. Can you imagine? going around, testing them, seeing what it's like. And outside of that, not just testing, his clients. The clients that he works with are, you know, ultra high net worth individuals. This guy plans, prepares, puts together $25 million weddings, corporate events around the world. And you've got to hear his story of how he started from a young age in a family business and then went into this area and how he's grown this business from scratch. And now, we, and we also talked about the next generation and what's going to happen. His wife's also in the business with him, so it's a family business and lots to learn there. And he's very open about the entire COVID-19, COVID situation, pandemic situation, and how it's impacted the hospitality industry. Then comes episode 64, Rohit Talwar, another futurist, bestseller of five, six different books. And we talked about the new book just before it was about to be released uh, when we, we did the interview called Aftershocks and Opportunities, Global Aftershocks and Opportunities from the Pandemic Situation. Again, a must watch. Goes through many, many different things that you need to consider of what's going to happen in the near future and some of the shocks that are coming still. And it's not over yet. Sean Wither, uh, episode 67 and uh, Coaching Practices. He talks about his G2S system you know he's one of the best coaches in the world trained by the best many many years ago built his own system and some of the top executives around the world hire this guy and and pay him a fortune just for an hour just to get coached by him so he talks about the difference between coaching and mentoring different practices why need a coach uh, when you don't need a coach what goes wrong with certain coaches there's a whole bunch of really good stuff there uh, from sean Episode 68, wow, inspiring. Uh, Dr. Tony Alessandro from San Diego, USA. I don't know, I've lost count how many books this guy's got, probably over 30 books he's published, at least seven or eight bestsellers um, in his 70s. And he just talks about the inspiring story of really losing everything in your 50s. Imagine working hard all of your life, losing everything in your 50s, rebuilding, and then deciding, you know what, why don't we get into this technology area and then 20 years later, becomes a tech multimillionaire and has got an unbelievable business called 24 by 7 Assessments, uh, which does literally thousands of assessments every month, automated and working with hundreds of companies around the world. So hats off to you, Tony, and you really inspired me talking about life, about wisdom, values, people, building your company, working with others in your company who are not family members and 
treating them like family members where they also end up with equity in the business. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. So Mark Sanborn, right? right? Episode 69, New York Times bestseller, multiple books, and the one that most people know is The Fred Factor on the Global Guru's top 10 list. Talks about purpose, service, leadership, family, his kids, next generation, Mark Sanborn, past president of the National Speakers Association in America, board member, phenomenal guy, one of the most professional people I've ever, ever seen on the platform as a speaker. Brilliant. Episode 69, go and watch that one. Episode 71, another dynamic lady, Richie She's a top 100 Forbes list member. Seems to be a pattern here with all the females I've been interviewing. Second generation family member, phenomenal, multi, multi, multi uh, million dollar family business. A few zeros on the end of that one. And uh, not only helping her father build a great empire, but also has been an entrepreneur in her own right, getting involved in ventures from Silicon Valley, healthcare, medical sectors, and many other areas. She's one to watch. I can see in her own right doing amazing things in the future. She's already doing it, but she talks a lot about, again, purpose, making social impact, building your teams, connections, how to start from scratch if you're a female entrepreneur and build the right relationships. Again, really inspiring. Episode 72, Martin Limbeck from Germany, number one sales trainer in Germany and probably in Europe, talks about how his entire business has changed, all the modules, programs updated, helping many corporates around the world with remote selling skills. So he gives us a masterclass in under an hour of all the things you could be doing to be effective with remote selling skills. Episode 73, hashtag 73, Olga Guseva. She talks about customer feedback. How, why do we get customer feedback, but then we don't do anything with it? She's an absolute expert in CX, all about the customer experience. She's on many boards around the world. There's awards that are given to other people, and she's one of the judges. Wow. You know, you have to watch this interview. You want to know how to create unbelievable customer experience, you know, how to make sure you get the right feedback, make sure you take action, and a lot of useful tips of how to go about running a CX project. We've got our dear friend, hashtag 74, Matt Crabtree, again, I've known from a very young age, many years. The title says it all. It was so intricate, so much fun. And essentially, the, the title of this video says it all. It says, blowing up your company and taking 12 weeks off. He talks about why you need to blow up your company. And we're not talking about firepower. We're talking different type of blowing up mentally, emotionally, okay? Waking up your company and stripping it, and maybe even starting again, getting rid of things that are not working, blowing up your company. But he talks about balance, and he's one of these people's absolutely committed to taking 12 weeks off. That was well before COVID-19, and doing that every year for decades with his family, and talking about balance, why he does it, how it can help you, how it can help your business. You have to watch that. He's the MD of Positive Momentum, a real fast growth company in Europe helping many, many corporates with big, big training solutions and consulting services. Paul McGee, motivational speaker, episode 76, shut up and move on. Okay, that's his message. He's the best selling author of SUMO, which is shut up and move on as an acronym. And he talks about how, how and why you should be changing your t shirt. What does your t shirt say about you? And it's an interesting story. I won't say anything more, but you've got to go and watch that video. He's, he's packed with about at least 10 short stories, 10 tips or so in that video that will really inspire you and things you can use literally immediately for your business. Then we get to another uh, icon. Uh, we get to episode 83, Daniel Priestley. Wow. He trains 500 entrepreneurs a year. Again, a best-selling author of over four books now on his fifth. Uh, one of them oversubscribed. The other one, 24 assets. And he literally, we, I, I made a note of every single tip he gave me. I even watched the video again myself twice. It was that good. And I'm the one who's doing the interview with Daniel. 15 key areas he dives in, deep dives into every single one of those 15 things. Literally are ideas and principles 
that would have an impact on your business. So go and check out Daniel Priestley, episode 83. Then we get to episode 84. Still with me? I'm nearly done. I hope you're still watching. Gordon Treadgold, who's also in the global gurus list, okay, top 10 list. Uh, he talks about fast method. He's also got numerous books, impacted millions of people. And this guy talks about how he has taken $100 million type projects and taken them to the next level and also how he's helped many companies save millions of dollars. But essentially, in a nutshell, he has got a great methodology to drive execution. So if you want to get things done, if you want to get some results, this guy simplified it. Go and watch Gordon's video. Episode 88, young generation, next gen member. He's actually a first generation entrepreneur, Faraz Al Masadi. He's 36 years of age. This guy, I mean, this is like a rags to riches, riches story. Started with zero, okay? Uh, and he was 25 years of age at the time in Dubai, came from Syria, had absolutely nothing in his pocket. And this guy has gone from zero to building a $544 million a year revenue business in 10 years. Okay, he's invested in 10 other companies, has 200 full-time uh, staff at the highest level, and he's also one to watch uh, one to watch on LinkedIn, about 100,000 followers now just on LinkedIn. He's also got a YouTube channel, and I'm really impressed of how he's built this company and worked with his brother, so it's a family business, and how these two came together with their talents to build a phenomenal company. And he is the founder and chairman of Fame Group in uh, Dubai, which is involved in the real estate property and many other areas. Episode 89, Andy Bounds. Okay, uh, probably out of all the ones that I've done, all the episodes, I would say this one was the one with the most energy, okay? My energy and Andy's energy, you put that together, it's like, I mean, it was, it was so, even I'll say it was wow. It was fun. It was fast. Um, it was just spontaneous okay and at the same time we went through a couple of his books uh, I'd gone through a couple of his books again just before the interview wanted to test how, how much he could remember from his own best-selling books and we went into the jelly effect the snowball effect two of his best-selling books and really talked about the most important thing here is we talked about 10 tips 10 tips he gave us on how to get your customers buy today and also went through some other really good sales tactics. And the most important thing he talked about was the afters, okay? I won't spoil it for you. Go and watch that video. That's episode 89. We've got another Andy. Episode 90, Andy Lopata, uh, the networking guru. He's also published many, many books. And he was doing exclusive interview with me before his new book was just launched called Connected Leadership, which is now an Amazon bestseller. And he created this book in record time, literally in a few weeks in lockdown, from idea to writing it, giving it to, to a publisher and having it ready and available on Amazon. So he's not just a networking guru, I think he's become a publishing guru. Um, and he gives us loads and loads of tips on how to work on your LinkedIn profile. Is it about uh, quantity or quality? How you should approach people, what you should say? How do you build trusted relationships? Why people don't go, don't get back to you? How do you work your network to grow your business? So many great tips from Andy Lapata. When we get to episode 93, hashtag 93, Arthur Kamazi from Bali, Indonesia, and he talks about his new book, which is not out yet. It's going to be out in a few months' time called Game On, and we have an entire debate around business gamification. This is a growth area. It's about taking all our tools and what we do in our companies for those of your consultants, experts, speakers, and then how do you how do you integrate with some type of gamification? Uh, whether it's a methodology or whether it's true gamification using software, which is what Arthur's done with various apps and his own software products. And again, a best-selling author you've got to check out. And finally, I got to episode 95, which I thought was worth mentioning. Malia Brightly Gillot, she is the MD of Family Business Place in the UK which has 150 UK members. They've been building this business for the last 10 years, her with her, uh, with her mother, Anita. A great inspirational story. We're getting that out lots of questions around what happens in family businesses. And she gives her own honest opinions based on working with 150 UK members, literally from first generation to one of their members is a 26th generation 
family business. Whew, that was a lot. I mean, I, I can't believe it myself, but all I want to say is, you know, I'm really blessed. Thank you so much. If you got to the end of this video for one watching it, if you are one of the people who I've interviewed, thank you so much. And, and, there, and everybody else, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave your comments, but share the video. We want to reach more people. I can't wait for the day when we can get to a thousand episodes and maybe every hundred episodes we'll do another one of these videos just as a refresh and a tribute to all the people who've helped us build the channel and inspire literally tens of thousands of people already from watching the video. So on that note, I want to thank you very much. Uh, stay blessed. And hopefully I'll interview you one day. And if you're interested, reach out to me. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're running a family business, if you're a Next Gen member, if you're a global expert, author, speaker, I'd love to get you on one of my shows soon. Okay, bye for now.